The experts are never the people that are yelling at you from their basement and telling you what to think. Hard Rock Lunch Box. Oh, what is up, everybody? It is another Thursday. We made it. We made it. My microphone did not make it. Let me fix that. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good on uh, on cam. That's what people in industry call it, cam, when you're on cam. Uh, and that uh, that brings me to uh, the fact that we are we are recording yet again for the top twenty. <laughs> I don't know what at what point YouTube just calls up Jimmy and is like, hey man, can we just stop recording that top 20? It's taking up way too much video space and we have pictures of ducks and Chinese kids to watch. I don't know. Is that how it works? <laughs> I'm so tired again. I don't know what keeps happening, man. I, I sleep so badly uh, every Wednesday night, it appears. <laughs> and then I come in here and I'm just like, like I, I'm like writing stuff down so I remember to talk about it. I've never had to do that before. Like, I mean, I would make notes and stuff like with something I wanted to touch upon. But my God, man, I am so, so tired every freaking Thursday. I know, uh, I, I think it was this... Just this last week, I don't even remember, honestly. I think it was just this last week, though, because I remember typing it up for the top 20, just saying, like, you know, if you keep saying that you're off your game, like, off your game, and, like, repeatedly you're off your game, like, maybe that's just your new game. Like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> God damn it, man. I cannot, I cannot pull, a like, a sober, unfoggy Thursday out of even the best magician's hat at this point. I just cannot seem to do it. Thursdays are becoming the absolute worst day for me physiologically because I can feel like I'm here. I know I'm here. But, man, I feel this fog just behind my eyeballs, and it extends all the way back to the rest of my brain, and I am just having a hell of a time. Pulling, uh, pulling things up. So I'm just going to stick to the prepared material. <laughs> uh, but before I get going, <laughs> speaking of not sticking to the prepared uh, prepared material, like I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody that is listening now, uh, everybody that has listened over the, over the years we've been doing this show, because this show today is the first show of our eighth year of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I want to say that I planned on doing something special for the anniversary, but planned is way too hard of a word. I considered doing something for the eighth anniversary of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. Considered is way easier than planned, because considered can on uh very easily be followed by and dismissed, which is exactly what happens. So I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> I used to do an anniversary show, and I don't remember what it was, but I know I've decided over the past couple years that it makes actually a little more sense to just stick with my countdowns on Thanksgiving and at the end of the year, because then I do the most played bands of the box ever. That's Thanksgiving, and that feels like an anniversary show. In fact, that probably was the anniversary show, because I think I did... I think it used to be the anniversary show was always in August, and I think that was the most played bands of the box, and I think Thanksgiving was the most played songs of the box, and then I think New Year's uh, was the most played songs of the box for that past year. And I like countdowns, but they seem a little silly. <laughs> I think what it was is that... Um, it just didn't make sense to do them so close together. I mean, like, I guess it's not that close, but it's like August, November, and then the end of the year. It's like, how many countdowns are there, man? Like, <laughs> so I tend to not do it. I think in every year, like, we should do something really good. Uh, like, I was gonna like call, uh, not call, because I don't use the phone, but 
I was gonna message some people and be like, "Hey, man, can you just like send in a message about like the box, or whatever?" Like, because the box actually has a voicemail. Like, I mean, Rebel Nine and the box share a voicemail, which is actually kind of funny, and I almost never use it, but uh, I have used it in the past. And it's kind of funny. I know I've had people do, like, bumpers and stuff, but, like, I don't know. I like doing them. I like. I used to do station IDs all the time, and now people don't ask me for them anymore. And I don't know that they, they, that they just don't ask people. Uh, I don't hear them all that often anymore, but I used to do them. And I used to do them, like, really good. I would come in, in my studio and, like, do, like, yeah, you're listening to DJ from Rebel 9 or only on, you know, whatever, radio. Uh, and you're listening to the Beep and Flash show. Like, I used to do those all the time, and, and I like it. And that's not true. I was actually able to get through the countdowns. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, you can feel free to hop up on uh, 99WNRR.com and uh, be part of the conversation there. If that's too hard to remember, which it's almost too hard for me to say, you can just go to hardrocklunchbox.com. There's a link right to the the show right at the very top so you can do that plus on hardrocklunchbox.com you can actually see all the past um or most most of the past hard rock lunch boxes if you ever want to i don't know go back in time and re-listen to anything that we've done or said i do like it i did like it better when i used to post all the music because it made a little bit more sense but like i was told and this is not at all a conceit at all but i, I was told that a lot of people actually would skip the music because it was just funnier to hear me talk about the music than actually listen to the music, which they can listen to on their own time. But um, I do I do have some music in there. Any any local artist that has expressly given me permission uh, to play it, um, you know, and that's a lot. That's quite a few of them, like a lot of, a lot of them. But uh, I do get through the countdowns. What happens is I just do not get through them on time, and that is kind of a difference. <laughs> Reminds me of... Uh, of a joke of the great Dave Chappelle when he was talking about how he had done a show. He had done a show in Chicago, and before the show, he was. I don't remember who he was hanging out with, but I want to say it was like rappers, and they offered him like a hit of weed or whatever. And he was saying that that was the most potent weed he'd ever had in his entire life, and he was just so high by the time he got up on the show up on the stage for the show that he'd done done um he, he just did a horrible horrible job and uh he did <laughs> his, his joke is he's talking about like all the rumors about him and he was like now everyone said like you know i got booed off stage in chicago for that show and he's like well that's not true i was booed but i did not leave the stage <laughs> and i feel like <laughs> I feel like that's a hundred percent where what happens on this on this stupid show because really you can hear the music anywhere. I mean, it, yeah, especially now with Spotify. I mean, back in the, I guess back when we started this, it was, it, Spotify was available, but like it wasn't, or maybe not. I don't even know how old Spotify is. I don't even care. Let them have their own anniversary show. But I know that um, there were songs that people could only hear here because they were local bands that had given me like. A, like early music and stuff like that, or or they weren't on Spotify yet, but now everybody's on Spotify. It's very hard to not be on Spotify, I think, at this point. <laughs> so so the music, I guess, tends to mean less, except when we come back from, like, an edit, and it's like, and now we're going to play this. Ah, oh, wasn't that the best song? And it's like, what? Like, but I have to cut it out, because I get in trouble for that. In fact, the, the band that got me in trouble for that was uh, Cage the Elephant, or p- probably not them specifically, but um, probably their... Uh, production company, or no, pub, pub, publisher, the publisher company. Spotify is 15 years old? Jesus Christ. All right, well, forget everything I just said. But Cage the Elephant got me in trouble because I was playing Ain't No Rest for the Wicked, and they sent me a cease and desist. They actually sent me cease and desist back to back, like two weeks in a row, and I was like, it's the same one, and I already took it down. So after that, I didn't want to get, like, I didn't want to lose the whole podcast because they threatened to take the entire thing and just get rid of it. And that's a lot of archive stuff that people do listen to. Like, surprisingly enough, like, I post this, like, I post this as the the replay as a podcast, um, which is what that is, uh, up on the hardrocklaunchbox.com. And, I mean, I know it's been on for, you know, I think I've been podcasting it for, like, seven years, maybe. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, no, it actually wasn't. I don't even know. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know I don't have the first ones up there. I know that for sure. Um, but I do know that 
like that's a lot of content. And I have, according to statistics, it's like sixteen or seventeen thousand downloads of this stupid show. Now again, it's over the course of all that time, so it's not as impressive as it sounds. But like, I'll still say it. <laughs> so. I actually did have something I wanted to talk about for the top 20 today, and seeing as we're 10 minutes in, and it'll basically be the bottom 10 of the top 20 here on the Hard Rock Lunchbox. <laughs> oh, before I forget, Bacon's My Podcast, of course, has a new episode out this week. They are talking to uh, Christina Chris from the band Kaleido. Uh, they talk a lot about um, a lot of the stuff she likes to do, and uh, they refer to them as she has a lot of bacons. It's a very interesting interview. I, I suggest you check it out, especially if you don't know the band, which I did not. So it was good for me to check out. That's available now. Uh, there are seven questions with Action Adventure Band uh, that went out last night. That probably would have been bumped by the top 20 that came out this morning. Um, I happen to really, really like this top 20 that's out today, so if you did not hear it the first time around, I suggest you check it out on Stranger TV. It's the one, um, it's the one where it's basically like, if you're, if, like, if you need to tell somebody that you're a good person, like, if you need to keep telling people that you're a good person, like, at some point, like, are you, like, do, like doesn't that necessarily imply that you aren't a good person? Like, because that should be something that people can infer by interacting with you. You shouldn't have to be like, no, man, I'm a really good person, or no, I'm not a bitch, or like, no, I'm not an asshole. Like, yeah, if you have to tell people that, like, repeatedly, you might want to check what your definition of those things are. So I actually really like that one, so... Uh, and it was basically all about like that Alabama Alabama article about the COVID doctor and stuff like that. It was, it's a good top 20 in my opinion, so I don't recommend a lot of them, but I thought that one was pretty good. And I'll, I might even promote that one. But anyway, on to today's top 20. That was one of my favorite sound effects of all time. I can conduct that. It's the one at the end. I like the little... But anyway... <laughs> How I'm talking about. But this is what I wanted to talk about, and I thought this was very interesting. So I was at the gym the other day. I know you can't tell from looking at me, but like I was, just have to take my word for it. And um, on the TVs, usually I listen to stuff, and I was, but the, there's TVs everywhere, so they kind of catch my eye. I noticed that um, the Suicide Squad movie is about to come out. Now, I'm not a huge comic book guy. I do like superheroes and stuff like that, and I'll admit when I was little, and I, I think I, I think I watched a fair amount of Justice League. I did not have comics; I was more into baseball cards than comics. Uh, and then I went right into music, and uh, I spent a lot of money on music. It's actually funny; every now and then I find stores of not shopping stores, but uh, my my hordes of like old CDs or even cassette tapes and stuff like that. It's like, man, I spent a lot of money on music. <laughs> I really I really did over the years. I spent a lot of money. So that's where a lot of my money and time went. And then of course for weed. But... So I'm not I'm not super up on all the comics and stuff like that. So I didn't even know what the Suicide Squad was until the Jared Leto movie came out whenever it came out. I didn't think it was that good. I can't even remember anything memorable about it other than Jared Leto I thought was really creepy good like his he looked like a really good villain and I thought that that was like mega impressive and I do remember at the time he had said something about what like a horrible piece of crap the movie was and I was like that seems odd that he would even be in it but I guess I, may, I mean I think people sign up for stuff and then you know, like in movies I feel like this happens people sign up for stuff and then all of a sudden you know there's through rewrite, rewrites and stuff like it just changes from project you signed up but you're contract contractually obligated to do stuff i don't know the deal me and jared aren't aren't friends anymore on facebook so or ever for that matter and i haven't joined this call yet but i i'm i'm still seriously considering it uh anyway so i saw the commercial and i didn't understand like i thought they were just remaking it and it felt like it was just a few years ago so like i message like i have a group chat with mikey and jimmy Right, two of my best friends should come as no surprise. But also, they are really well versed and really knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. So I message them, "Hey, man, I thought didn't they just do well? Like, why are they doing a remake of the Suicide Squad?" And like within minutes, <laughs> I got 
not only the answer, but like detailed information as to why that answer was correct and other stuff that I didn't even know to ask for. You know, so it's like kind of like a reboot and all this other stuff. And it's the director for Guardians of the Galaxy, which is my favorite. The the two Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy movies are my two favorite superhero movies. I mean, Iron Man's like a pretty close one to you. Uh, but like, I love those movies. And the, f- the simple fact that it's like the same director, it's going to be doing, like, I'm already going to watch the Suicide Squad now. Like, is I just, I love those movies. So I got all this information and it just sort of, it hit me as I was walking out of the gym. And maybe, I don't know if everybody has this experience. I guess I do from time to time, but I certainly had it. So as I'm walking out of the gym, it just occurs to me, like, how easy that was. <laughs> like, right? Like, it was easier than asking Siri. It was easier than looking it up online. Like, I have two people in my inner circle, at least. I mean, I have definitely more comic book people than, than just them. But, like, I have two people in my innermost circle that are my resident experts in this field. And, and they serve as experts in other fields, too. Like, the, just don't think, like, Mike and Jimmy are just sitting around and rolling around in comic books. I mean, I don't think that they're not, because they might be. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge. Um, but, like, I was just struck by how easy it was to get that particular piece of information quickly and accurately and almost tailored to my sensibilities, because we're friends, right? And I... And this is all going on under the backdrop of this constant low-level argument about stuff like COVID and vaccines and all that stuff. And I'm watching, you know, I I, I haven't really been on the news lately because I have been making time to go to the gym. So that cuts into my news time. I'm trying to, like, you know, get while I'm, like, on the elliptical. So, So I'm following some of it. But there's so much other political stuff going on that the the COVID thing is really low level. But, like, you know, like, New York City is now going to, like, really clamp down on the vaccines. And if you don't know what that is, like, we can talk about it during the break and stuff like that. But, like, this whole low-level conspiracy fringe on both sides take on, on vaccines that are informing people through stuff like Facebook or, you know, blogs, if they still exist, and podcasts, like, I guess it struck me that people, like, are getting their information from disreputable sources. Now, that sounds really simple um, and, like, kind of oversimplifying everything. And not at all surprising, right? People getting them from, you know, bad sources and stuff like that. But, uh, okay, sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to get this out correctly. Like, I was, I was watching, um, I was watching this doctor who used to be, I, I think it was part of, like, the emergency COVID response team for Biden, maybe during the campaign. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I wasn't following all of that. But he said something so... So telling. He's like, it has been so co-opted and so corrupted, this this place of information, that there's so many places that you can't go any longer to find out the truth because everything's political or, you know, class warfare or, you know, gender warfare or race and all that other stuff. And he actually said, this is an expert in the field, he actually said, he's like, don't listen to me. He's like, it's going to sound political if it comes from me. And he's right, you know, because he worked on the Biden team. Therefore, if you're, you know, one of these really staunch anti-America, anti-current president, anti, like, you know, just one of those real, not my president, like all those people, like you're never going to believe what he says. And he he said, don't listen to me. He's like, go talk to a doctor. Go talk to an ER nurse. Go talk to somebody in the COVID wing. Like... And it occurred, like, again, in the backdrop of this conversation with Mike and Jimmy, it occurred to me just how easy it is to get this information, to go see for yourself, to go figure it out. 
Like, there are doctors kind of everywhere. And, yep, not all of them are going to be perfect, and maybe not all of them are on the same page, and maybe some would urge caution. Maybe some say, hey, man, don't take vaccines. But the simple fact of the matter is, if you go to an expert in the field that's within your, your, your sphere of influence, within your inner circle, that is always going to be better than getting it from some dipshit on social media that only has an axe to grind. The, the sheer amount of complete and utter falsehoods that I deal with every single time I bother to log on. And this was like last week when we were talking about run it by your gut. Like, just <clears throat> just check and see, like, inside. Like, does that make sense? Of course it doesn't make sense. And I don't know if I gave this example, but, like, one of the number one things that they're still talking about is the microchips in the vaccines. First of all, if there were microchips in the vaccines, it wouldn't be free. That's for sure. But second of all, chances are if you're bitching about the microchips in the vaccine and you're posting about it, you're doing it on some sort of electronic advice, a, a device that we know for a fact is tracking you. So that's not even a good reason to not have the vaccine. Like... There are no microchips in the vaccine. This isn't inner space. Dennis Quaid isn't roaming around your body and stuff like that, you know, trying to figure out how to get out. There are experts out there, and I I feel bad because I'm talking to believers, like people that totally understand that. Like, if you're listening to this show, if you've put up with everything that I've talked about over the past couple years, like, you are definitely on board with, yeah, there's science out there, and there's experts to listen to. They are never... They are never the experts. The experts are never the people that are yelling at you from their basement and telling you what to think. I will never do that. I will only ever tell you what I think and what I think people should do in order to inform themselves uh, about the world around them. I think that that is the most important thing. So my advice to you, whether it's from not knowing why they're doing another version of the Suicide Squad to whether or not you should get your gallbladder removed, to whether or not there are Jewish space lasers in the sky, to, cl- to climate change, to this vaccine, to legitim- legitimacy of the presidency. Like, there are experts to ask, and there are experts around. Do not limit yourself to the incredibly ever-growing mass of the stupid that are out there. It's only going to make things worse, and you are never going to get an answer that way. Just saying. And, of course, you can always ask me what I think, and I will always tell you what I think. And I am subject to change those opinions over time because I also do research and follow stories, and things do change. I I cite it all the time. My my opinion on gun ownership and the rights of the has spelled out in the Constitution and the amendments have changed over the years because I've done my reading and I've done my homework and I've listened to people that are smarter than me about or as smart as me about their take on what the Constitution stands for and I've changed over the years and you know we can have that conversation too but it it is possible to do those things if you bother to listen and collect the right information and one of these days I hope I will have enough money and time that I can research every last thing that I am curious about. And to me, as an intellectual, that sounds awesome. But it's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of FU money, as it were. General uh, sale for Data Remember, I think, goes on sale tomorrow. If you've never seen them live, I recommend it. Highly. Highly.